Hello everyone, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Andover, Minnesota here in the U.S. and I'm here to bring you another live paper crafting class. Um, sorry, I'm late. There were all kinds of things going wrong today. <laughs> and I woke up at like 5.30, 6 o'clock, so you'd think I would have been ready, but I apologize. Um, let's see here. My eye. We'll just address that first. If you notice that it's closed more than the other, I'm going through a healing process. I had a sty. You guys guessed it. Those of you that were on Facebook during my live on Friday, um, yeah, it's a sty. That's what it was diagnosed with, and so I have these drops. But it's not healed yet, so you're just going to have to ignore that one. Um, just, you know, look at one half of my face. <laughs> uh, the other thing is... Trisha is visible. We figured out the problem and she is now visible. We can see her. Um, she has a little wrench symbol next to her name. She is my moderator. So if you are um, in need of getting a, a question answered or you want to communicate with me, the best way to do it is to go through Trisha. So you're going to take and put the ampersand sign in while we're live and then write out her name, Trisha, with a C-I-A at the end. And um, her name should pop up. You can click on it and it will tag her. It will make her name orange for her to see. So she'll be able to see your comment or question a lot easier. So help her out with that if you can. Um, what else do I want to tell you? We are going to do a fun project. In fact, I have a whole bundle with some coordinating paper to share with you today. It was um, a presentation that I did for an event that we had in January called Demos Galore. So I'm bringing that event to you um, with one of the folds that I didn't go into detail in during that event. So if you were part of that event and you saw that video, you're going to learn even more by seeing this one. Um, so thank you, Trisha, for being here, for being my moderator. If you comment during the live, you're going to get entered into a prize drawing. So please comment away, ask questions, tell me where you're from, um, all those kinds of fun things, right? Uh, share your crafting tips. That's always fun. Um, and I think that's it. I think that's it. We'll do the prize drawing towards the end. I noticed that I'm wearing the same shirt that I wore yesterday. <laughs> I was going to change. I was going to match my project today. I'm just in gray. Sorry about that. If you are not watching this live, please comment afterwards. I do a prize drawing um, from the comments that are after the live also. And I don't think I mentioned that enough because um, I noticed that there's not a lot of comments that we had on the last video. I think we had like 115 or so. So, uh, but I will share who won from the after live comments at the end of this video as well. Let's go to comments since we are on that right now. I'm gonna get my computer set up here. There we are. These are comments from last week. And I just wanna point out that Trisha Josephs was trying so hard to announce those winners. <laughs> What was happening is YouTube was reading her comments as like spam because of the emojis and all the information that was in there and it wasn't letting her announce them. She said she was pasting and pasting and pasting. It wasn't working. Um, I did finally see that at the end and I allowed it to come through. But our last week's winners, you didn't even know you won. And so I just want to say congratulations to Morgan and Eileen. You'll want to reach out to me. Um, my email is in there on Trisha's comment. You can see it there. Uh, let's see, what else? Oh, a lot of you mentioned how many tabs I have open in my computer when I'm on my internet screen. <laughs> I'm a multitasker, um, but I just have to say we have been doing some uh, research into bathroom remodeling. So I had even more tabs than normal open and um, I kind of solved that problem today, I think, I hope. So you don't have to look at all my tabs. Um, some fun comments by Lisa and Elizabeth. Very funny, you guys made me laugh. Um, let's see here. So we did a kit. We opened up a kit last week and we multiplied the number of cards. Lisa, it was fun to see your name pop on. Um, Lisa lives pretty close to me. We've known each other for years. She has been a demonstrator in my group for a long time and it was just fun to see your name pop up a couple times yesterday, Lisa. So yay. Um, let's see here. I wanted to comment. Oh, <laughs> hippie Kansas girl. I love your comment. Um, the embellishments that we used last week, she she kind of compared them to the three bears. That was funny because they were three different sizes. What else? I don't think any of you had too many um, questions. We had some first time viewers. Um, Sandy asked about why the glue dots are on the other side of the roll right now. Um, that's just the way Stampin' Up! is manufacturing them right now. Um, at least I was told that. 
and um, Texas, we are still keeping you in our thoughts and prayers. Um, I'm hoping things are getting better now. It's getting warmer here at least, so I hope that you're all doing well. Um, Lori in Minnesota, <laughs> you made me giggle. Minus eight degrees, it's warming up. We have had some really, really cold weather here. And yes, I have been celebrating Stampin' Up, uh, being a demonstrator for Stampin' Up for over 21 years now. So thank you for all your comments last week. Um, let me get this set up so that you can see measurements for this project this week. So we have a kite fold card to share today, and it's going to be so much fun. So I got this idea from Sam Kelcott um, from Mixed Up, uh, Mixed Up Crafts, I think so, it, the link is in the description of my video. Um, and also in the description of my video are the list of supplies. So you don't have to necessarily do a screenshot or copy them from here or whatever. You can take and copy them from the list of supplies in my direction or my um, description of my video. But you can also wait until 12.15 because this video will go live on my blog at that time. Um, oops. There we go. So you can visit my website at stampyourartout.com and catch this information, this video, photos of the projects, the supply list again with visual little things you can click on in case you want to make any purchases. Um, you'll also be able to access the measurement list and all of that straight from my blog at stampyourartout.com. The link is in the description of this video. But as you can see, we're going to be using the In Bloom bundle. We're going to be using the Paper Blooms um, designer paper and that is a free celebration item that is current right now and it'll be available through the end of February and it's free with a $50 order so if you see anything in here in this video that I like while we're doing this um, I welcome you to um, purchase again you can go to my my blog and click the shop button to do so okay um, what else are we using? Some pretty colors. Seaside Spray. We're using Night of Navy. Whisper White. There's a little bit of Rococo Rose in there and some old olive. It's beautiful paper. I can't wait to show it to you. Uh, what else do I want to point out? Measurements. I'm going to keep the measurements up on my screen here because they are kind of detailed, um, especially with the Paper Blooms paper and the foil sheets. All right. So I'm going to move to my desktop here. Hang on, there we go. And I think I'll first introduce you to the Paper Blooms paper, and then I'll show you the beautiful stamp set and dies. So this is one side of the 12 by 12 paper. You can see gorgeous, beautiful flowers. Okay, and oh, and then we have a circle fun pattern right there too. I'm gonna put that one on the bottom because that one is not as important as the flowers because the flowers coordinate with the actual um, the actual bundle, uh, the InBloom bundle, which is a purchase purchasable bundle from the mini catalog. And then here are the flip sides of those papers. Kind of disperse them like this so you can see better the different patterns on the reverse side. So what we want to do is we want to grab one of these patterns that is a side that or a pattern that we can use both sides of for our kite fold card because it's going to be a lot quicker and easier. I decided to choose this one for the the card that I'm going to be building, but I could totally see like I've already used this one in my other sample because it has a smaller print design. You want to pick something that has a, a smaller print design. We're going to set this off to the side and now I'm going to bring in the pierced blooms dies and the coordinating stamp set called In Bloom. And you can see the images here are very similar to the images that are in the paper, the paper designs. We have some fun sentiments in here in a couple different fonts. I'm gonna be using the Happy Birthday and the stamp that looks like a small little five petal flower. What I did with the Happy Birthday is I actually cut it because it comes as one stamp but I cut the bottom portion, you really are the best. I cut that off because I wanted to use um, you really are the best with you are amazing, um, you mean so much to me. I thought that those words could go with more than just happy birthday. And I also wanted to just be, be able to use happy birthday by itself. So you can trim your stamps. You can cut them down a little bit. Here are the dies. There's a ton of them. There are actually 25 dies in this 
set of Pierce Bloom dies. This is what they look like. I've got the leafy ones in green, the more flowery ones in uh, orange petal pinkish color, and then I've got ones that aren't necessarily floral. Um, these could be centers of flowers, but I have those in white. So here we have either a stem or it could be uh, a continuation of the ribbon that ties this pretty bow here. And this is a fun little label piece. Notice that they all have some stitching within too, or most of them do. So that's why they're called pierced blooms because they have a stitch look to them. We're gonna set these off to the side. We're gonna grab our paper pieces. So I've got already a four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece of colored cardstock. This is Knight of Navy. I've got another layer that's gonna go on top. This is Whisper White, I'm sorry, Basic White. And this is four and an eighth by five and three eighths inches. And then I've got my piece of Seaside Spray, which is even smaller. This is four inches by five and a quarter. So in the directions, I wrote down colored cardstock, color number one and color number two. And that's because I want you to be able to be able to apply those measurements to the second card that I show you at the end. So I have two different versions of this card. You also need a scrap of color number one. And so I've got that here. We're going to use one of the dies with that. We're going to use this one here. You need um, some twine. And I'm choosing the twine that comes in the flowers. What is it called? Flowers for every season. Flowers for every season. It has that seaside spray color in it. It also has some silver. And that's why the, the metallic foil of choice is silver. I'm going to be using silver on this card along with our silver metallic edge ribbon. So for the twine, we need about six inches. And for the ribbon, we need three lengths that are about four inches long. And you can see, I'm just eyeballing it. I wanna be able to tie those in knots. Let's bring in our foil. Our foil sheets normally come in 12 by 12. I've got a little piece of that, and I've actually got a smaller piece of the designer paper, so I'll set this one aside. And then we need our basic white, and our basic white is a four inch wide piece by 11 inches. So normally if you cut um, eight and a half by 11 and a half, you're gonna get a four and a quarter inch size. We want that a little narrow, narrower. We want that at four inches. Okay, let's, um, let's go ahead and cut this we're going to die cut this and we'll set this aside for now okay so for our um foil sheets if we go back to those measurements the measurements for the foil are one and three quarter by three and a quarter and then one and three quarter by one and a half so it's going to be easiest for me if i just do a one and three quarter inch strip like that and then that's taking up the measurement for both of those pieces, one of the measurements. That's the one and three quarter inch measurement. Now I wanna cut a piece that is three and a quarter and one that is one and a half. And I actually have a mistake that I already saw in my measurements. Gotta love that. Because when we cut these two pieces, we are only taking care of one kite fold card, which, you know, it, the reason why is because this is not double-sided foil. So we actually have to come in and we need to cut another three and a quarter inch piece, and this one's not gonna be big enough. So, ha, huh, gotta do another one. And one and a half inch piece. Okay, so my suggestion is, if you want to stay away from one-sided paper so that you can complete one kite fold card with just two pieces like this, then don't use foil. But the foil makes the kite fold layers so, so, so pretty. Um, so I could not just turn it away. You could use colored cardstock, which is of course double-sided, right? You could use another designer paper, but that might be too busy. So I decided I'm just gonna go ahead and sacrifice and make two pieces of each. Um, now this is what we do with our foil pieces. We're going to angle cut. Now this piece or this, these two pieces and these two pieces are going to be cut differently. This one 
is going to get cut this way. So I'm just going to put corner to corner and line it up in the channel of my trimmer and cut it that way. I'm going to bring it back over here so I can see it. And because I cut corner to corner this way, upper right to lower left, I'm going to zoom in a bit here. I'm going to do the same thing with this one, upper right to lower left. So line it up in the channel. And I've got those two pieces done. Okay, now these are going to get cut opposite. So I'm going to go from upper left to lower right. We'll just trade places here. I'll shove this over. Okay, upper left to lower right. So we're going to angle it this way. Oops, there we go. There's that one. And then the same thing here upper left to lower right. As long as you have them sitting next to each other, visually you'll be able to do it right. <laughs> okay, so there we've got our diagonal cuts. Now these two can go together, and these two can go together, these two can go together, and these two can go together. Do you see how I did that? So then we can just shift these. These can come over here, these can come over here, and we have two sets of kite fold layers for our card. That is the reason you need to do two sets of foil. We're going to set those off to the side. We've got these ready to go. Now we need to work with the designer paper. So for the designer paper, you kind of want to eyeball where you've got a good dense design going. And I kind of like, I kind of like, I actually like it through here. So I'm going to cut along a strip along here. Now for my designer paper, it says one and three eighths by two and seven eighths and one and three eighths by one and an eighth. So we're going to stick with the one that is common. It's the one and three eighths. And we're, we'll just use this side of the trimmer here, one and three eighths. And we're going to cut there. And now we can take and do the second, um, second cut on each of those. So one and three eighths by two and seven eighths. That will take us to here. And one and three eighths by one and an eighth. And that will take us to here. There we go. Okay, so for these pieces though, we have a flip side that will work. Okay, so I'm gonna cut I think I'm going to cut from here to here. And it doesn't matter which corner to corner you pick, but you want to be consistent. So whatever I do on this one, I have to do the other one. Okay, so I've got that. And then this piece, because you'll notice this is going to have to get flipped over like that. Okay, so on this piece, I'm going to go corner to corner this way. And I hope that's right. <laughs> All of a sudden I'm like panicking. Is that right, Rachel? We'll find out. Okay, so we've got upper right to lower left, upper right to lower left. Now, if we're gonna keep, I think I'm gonna keep this one. So I'm gonna flip this one over and then I can keep this one, which means I can flip that one over. Hey, it worked. Okay, so there we go. There's our fun two-sided paper that allows us to do, just do those, those cuts. Let's grab our big stamp and cut and emboss machine. And we're going to set this up so we can die cut this tiny little piece. Let's say you don't want to invest in the large machine. There are some, um, some things that are indicated in the catalog. Um, and you know, it's just, um, there's like a little mark next to them in the catalog that indicate that you could die cut or emboss with the smaller machine. So I just want to show you that cute little mini machine that you could use instead. Um, it is tinier and it still allows you to do die cutting and embossing, but just on a smaller 
narrower platform. So this die certainly could be used in the smaller, smaller machine, but we're gonna go ahead just because that's the one I listed in the supplies and use the larger one. So I'm putting my die, cutting side down on top of our scrap of Knight of Navy. I've got the sandwich here, sorry. I've got platform number one. I've got um, my adapting plate number two. And then I've got one of my cutting mats, my messier cutting mat on the bottom. Cardstock, die down on top of the cardstock, and then my other cutting mat on top of that. And you just want to make sure that as you're bringing it in, you're keeping everything lined up. We'll crank it through and we've got our pretty little pierced bloom, which is hard to see in this light. Sorry. Can you see that? Oh, there we go. There's some fun little pierces in there. Okay, so there's that. My catch-all table. Okay. Got that done. And now let's work on this piece. So we're going to grab our ruler and a pencil. There it is. And we're going to do some measuring. We first need to score this in the middle. I thought I was done with my cutter. Hang on. We need to score this in the middle. So half of 11 inches is five and a half. So we're positioning it at the, 11, uh, the five and a half inch mark and we're gonna use our scoring blade to make a crease. We'll fold it. We'll grab our bone folder. And we've got a nice crease in there. We aren't done with our cutter. I have more cuts to do. Silly Rachel. Okay, next, we're going to do some marks on here. We're going to mark the halfway point between the two sides here. And this paper is four inches wide in this direction. So along the edge where there's the fold, you're going to mark it at two inches right at the top here. Then we're going to go from the fold edge down the right side and mark it at one and three quarter inches. And we're gonna do the same thing to this side. And to mark it at one and three quarter inches from the fold line, you can just start at one and three quarter inches and then mark it at the zero. That's fun math for all of you, right? <laughs> Gotta love it when Rachel does that. Or you can go like this. Here, just put it outside of it, start at the zero and bring it to one and, a, one and three quarters. Sorry, I like to do that stuff once in a while. Okay, we're going to um, we're going to score here, and we're going to cut in this direction. We need one more mark. Sorry, almost forgot. We need a mark down here. We need to mark at the middle point again, so two inches down here. All right, so I've got a middle, a middle, and then two sides that are equal distance from the top edge. We're going to score, and we're going to cut. Let's start with the score lines. From there to there, we're going to line up this mark and we're going to line up this mark in the channel of our trimmer and we're going to put a crease mark in there. We're going to do the same thing to this side and we'll put a crease mark in there. And so far we have the, type, the top of the kite, okay? The top of the kite is not going to get cut, it's just going to get folded. Okay, that's how we're going to create this, this kite fold at the top. These are going to indent going the other way. Before we do that, let's trim though. And you can trim the two layers of regular basic white cardstock together at the same time. If that's tough on your trimmer, just do one layer and then, you know, do the other side and then you can line everything up and trim again. I'm going to go ahead and cut both at the same time with my cutting blade. And then we'll turn it this way and do the same thing here. So you can see that this card is actually quite easy. It's pretty easy to put together. Mark, 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 cut, cut, score, score. And then when we open it up, again, we wanna do some folding. 
We'll use the bone folder to make it even stronger. And then these folds, instead of going this way now, we're going to go the opposite way. And when you're at this point, you want to line up the bottom point here. And then you slowly want to make sure that all your creases are keeping those bottom two points together. Now you can come in here and you can erase those pencil lines if you want, or that can be the flip side. <laughs> that can be the back side that you cover up. And we'll just do that. We'll just cover it up. Your kite fold card does not lay real easily. So one, one little thing that you'll have to bring in that's non-stampin' up is either some thin um, clear fasteners, they're called Velcro, um, or you can get little magnets. And um, so I'm gonna use the Velcro. We're just gonna grab a couple out of here. And we're gonna cut one here. I'm just gonna cut one circle from each. So the scratchy side and the other side. Put these back. What I like to do is sandwich them together. And I've got the soft on top, the scratchy on the bottom. I'm gonna peel off one layer here. And on my finished card, I just wanna make, yep, I've got the soft on the bottom. So I'm gonna put my soft against the bottom corner like that, and then I'll peel off this piece and we'll make it sandwich down on top and connect with the, the scratchier side, okay? So now your card, when you put it together, will lay flat. You can also put some extra creases in through here. Okay, so that's ready to stamp and decorate up. Let's, um, let's, let's, add, let's add the stamping first. We'll do the stamping first. We're gonna open it up. We'll flatten it out. We're gonna bring in our Knight of Navy ink pad. And we're gonna stamp the happy birthday in there. How many of you are proud of me right now? <laughs> All right, little side joke. Making sure that your birthday message is going parallel to the score line up here. So just eyeball that as you go. Don't eyeball the edges of your stamp, your stamp block, sorry. Don't eyeball these edges. Eyeball things underneath that you'll have to kind of, you know, because that's what's going to be left behind. The edges of your block are not going to be left behind. We'll stamp a little flower down here in the middle. We'll set these over here. Okay, let's do some let's do some decorating on the top of this. In fact, here we'll have it open, make it easier. So let's bring in our kites, our fun little kite designs. And I'm going to just put two of them right next to each other. Like, okay, they could go like this, but I think I'm going to have a lot more space. Ah, eh, it doesn't matter. Oh, I know what I did. I did this. So I just put them kind of wonky like that together and then flip them over. Now how many of I how many of you did I confuse by doing that? I flipped them over so that I can put adhesive all the way up to those corners on this piece and this piece. Okay? Then we can just layer those within lining up everything as well as you can. You're not going to have an equal distance all the way around, just so you know. It's a little bit narrower down here than it is at the top. So you just want to look at all three sides as you're laying this down and make sure that it gets as even as possible looking. Okay, then these two are going to go. So let's flip them over, put them together so it's easier to tape. Tape right over the top of both at the same time. And add those to the upper foil pieces. Okay, next we want to get those onto our kite. And my recommendation is just to put a little bit of adhesive 
down first, not even, not, not barely any, just a tiny bit so you can move it and shift it. Just lay those down like this. And then you can say to yourself after they're in place, you can say, oh, which one do we need to shift a little bit more? Because you're trying, you're trying to fit some pieces in a little, a, a weird shape. It's not a typical shape, right? Okay, I think we're good. So, and you can do the same thing here where you put these pieces next to each other if you'd like, or you can take some scrap paper, you can connect it to get the adhesive all the way to the bottom, or you could use like a glue. I'm, um, I'm gonna actually bring in some glue. It's called our multi-purpose uh, Tombow liquid glue, and I'm gonna be using that to add the twine so if you really wanted to get adhesive all the way down into those little corners, you could just use the glue. Okay, and then these two pieces, we'll put those side by side and add them together. All right. A little putsy. <laughs> this is where you want to have that fast forward button. When I do pre-recorded button or pre-recorded videos, I would have just fast forwarded through all this. Okay, so that's on there. <laughs> this guy, this little guy, he's gonna get added with a dimensional, and we'll put that in the center like this. This kite is going to go on the top of the card like this because it won't fit straight up and down. It's going to go beyond and then it won't fit into a regular medium um, envelope. So we have to angle it, which is fine because an, uh, a kite that's flying in the, in the wind is angled anyways, right? When we put this down though, we need to have our twine attached to the bottom. And I want it to be coming pretty much exactly out the bottom. So we're going to grab the multi-purpose liquid glue at this point. This is where it's really important you have a glue or a glue dot down there, something that's gonna make sure that that twine comes straight out the bottom. And then we'll add that like that. We'll set that aside to dry. We're gonna grab these strips of ribbon. We're gonna do little overhand knots with them. Oops, there we go. We're just doing overhand knots. These are gonna be the, the ties on the twine of the kite. If you wanna cut longer pieces than what I have, you certainly can. How long are these? Are they four? Oh, they're three and a half-ish. That's probably why. Do four inches. <laughs> All right, there's that. And you want them kind of tight, but not too tight. And then we can trim those up too. Let's layer these pieces together. Um, another option for this layer, since you're going to see it, is you could emboss it. You could do some fun texturizing to it by embossing it first. I'm keeping it pretty simple. This is going to go here. Now, none of these pieces open. It's just the kite portion of your card that is going to open. At this point, we can take and add adhesive to the back side of our kite. And that's going to go about here. And this twine is just going to get kind of angled like that. So to angle it and to keep it there, we're going to grab our glue dots. And we're going to add a ribbon with our glue dots. to certain areas where we really want, I'm gonna add two glue dots here, where we really want that twine to stay down. So we'll add one there. We'll add another one about here. And we'll add one more. So I'm picking up about two glue dots per knot. We'll add another one kind of about here. And then we can come in with our ribbon 
scissors and we'll just trim at an angle here. I don't think this is my ribbon scissors. It doesn't seem as sharp. Maybe I accidentally used it on paper. <laughs> don't use your scissors that have, you know, that's a sign for ribbon. Don't use it with paper. It's going to dull it. We need some embellishments. I'm bringing in the adhesive back um, sequins. These are the artistry, artistry blooms adhesive back sequins. We'll grab the take your pick tool. And I think I'm going to use this one. There's like four different colors of sequins in there. So we'll use this one. Pick it up, put it in the middle, then on the inside of the card. We'll put a small one. And there is that. There is that. That's what the finished card looks like. Isn't that fun? So you can see the fun little sequin, the little shine in there the silvery metallic -y stuff on the edges. It's a very fun card. You could do any sentiment from that set in there, obviously. Here's another version of that card. So this one's using the copper foil. It's using the um, Rococo Rose. No, what is this one? Let me look here. Blushing Bride, it's called. Blushing Bride Metallic Ribbon, which has a hint of Rococo Rose at the edges, um, but it's two-sided, so you wanna twist it when you tie your knot because this side looks a little dif different, it's smoother. And then I used the snail twine, so there's a combination of a, a petal pink and a white, I think it's petal pink, Blushing Bride maybe? Um, but it's a pink and a white twine combo pack, and I used the white from that. This is obviously one of the other designer papers in the pack. I used Rococo Rose for the um, color number one, and then color number two is the Night of Navy color. And on the inside of that, I just have like the blue sequins on there. So it's the same, same look, just a different message. I hope that you enjoyed those. I have the bundle to share with you though, so I'm not done yet. Um, let's go ahead and set those off to the side. Let me introduce you again to the bundle. This card here is super simple. So this card is done using just the stamps, basically. Okay, so I just took one of our um, basic white note cards you can get them in a note card and envelope pack. And I just used uh, Bright's colored um, stamp pads. Uh, this piece, this message here is in like a brown. So I think it was early espresso or soft suede, one of the two. And then of course added the Artistry Bloom sequins to just give it a little bit more um, brightness. So there's a simple card done with just the stamps. Stampin' Up! has another just the stamps card on their website that I had to copy when I did my presentation. I cased this card. It is beautiful, I think. Um, it's using some of the gorgeous grape sheer ribbon that um, is a part of the hydrangea uh, bundle or suite of products. That's a very beautiful suite, by the way. And then we've got the Artistry Bloom sequins in here. I did use the dies too, sorry. The dies are in here. So I die cut uh, um, melon mambo and a gorgeous grape flower, raise them up on dimensionals. Did not do the inside of the card, but um, just wanted to case that beautiful front that you can see on their, on, their, on their website in the store. This is another card that you can make using the dies and the stamps. Again, not bringing in the Pierce Blooms paper yet. This is just the dies and the stamps, some um, ink, some cardstock, some adhesive, and some embellishments. This is the gold and silver pearls that you can get. They're metallic pearls. Um, some granny apple green best color ever and some um, coastal cabana another best color ever i did use the blending brushes and kind of deepened the blue uh, i put some bermuda bay ink actually on top of the coastal cabana with the blending brush and it just gave a nice dark shading underneath this main layer here so that is that card fun 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 here's another one using the stamps um, this is not using the dies, but it's using the stamps and then some other uh, items from the Hydrangea Hill suite of products. I'm using the pastel pearls. I'm using the mercury glass acetate in here. Granny apple green ink, um, gorgeous grape ink, and then of course the granny apple basic white and gorgeous grape cardstock. So there's another layout that you could do using that, that bundle. Okay. 
I have already shared some other fun things in past blog posts. Um, actually, this one was in a video too that some of you may have caught. This is a two compartment box that I demonstrated how to make. Um, you can either close it with Velcro or magnet or you can slip it between two layers in the front here and just uh, this is actually my favorite way of closing it and close it like that. These will hold uh, the what are they called? <clears throat> lint truffles or the um, the Ferrer Rocher? Is that what they are? The balls? I don't remember. Anyways, check back on previous videos so you can see how to make these two compartment boxes. They're super cute. And I've also got ones that I made with the larger paper. So a lot of you may have seen these too. This is made out of the 12 by 12 designer paper, the Paper Blooms. I've also incorporated using the dies done with some of the cardstock um, that's coordinating, of course, some stamp images. This image comes from a different stamp set, but um, just kind of some fun looks here. These are the two compartment boxes. This is using magnets, and um, this one I think was Velcro. Yep, Velcro. And along with that, I made an even smaller one. Um, this is a tinier one. You'll just have to check out that video. So this is a tinier one using the Paper Blooms paper as well. Okay, what else have I shared in past posts? I did a blog post on this card. This is the Z Fold layer card, and it's using all three pieces. So it's got the Paper Blooms designer paper. Oh, I've got some temporary adhesive on there too for photographing. Rachel does that. When she photographs her projects, she has to make sure that they stay closed. <laughs> so there is uh, stamp images, the dies, uh, some rhinestone basic embellishments. There's that silver metallic foil edge ribbon again, and it's called a Z Fold layer card. Really easy to make, fun and impressive to open too. I've cased a few cards from other demonstrators. This first one is a card that you may recognize from one of my good friends in Australia, Kylie Bertucci. She did this card, really super easy card. So the impressive part of this is embossing. So if you have never done heat embossing before, you can get white on black or silver on navy like it's, like it's here. It's just a real stunning way to get your stamp images to shine. Um, typically the embossing powders are in metallics, but you can also get it in white and there's other colors that are out there in craft stores. Just a really fun way to make that element stand out. And because this was silver, she also used the silver-ish looking rhinestones and then just two layers of paper two layers of the Pierce Blooms paper. That's it. Very fun. I also um, looked on, on Pinterest and found four card designs done by Stacy Marsh. So these are cased by Stacy Marsh. Thank you, Kylie and Stacy, for your fun creations. So these two cards that she did are basically just with the papers. She focused on the elements of the papers um, I'm thinking too that when she made these cards, I think it was just the um, designer paper that she had in her hands because she hadn't used any of the In Blooms stamp set images or the Pierce Blooms dies in her four cards. She fussy cut around all of these beautiful little pieces here. Um, by the way, the dies do not line up with the paper if you were wondering. And then also used on this one, you can see the clear um, these are actually the frosted epoxy droplets that comes in a package of clear and, and frosted and she has the frosted ones on there. And then this little sentiment I think comes from the stamps, yeah, best year stamp set. Um, Knight of Navy ink, you can see here, here's using a designer paper as a layer, but the top is just in white so it really does not distract from the rest of the card. So two beautiful cards. This one's super simple to make. This one's very elaborate using the gold ring also. And then she used some vellum on these two samples. So again, these are Stacy's cards. I just cased them. Um, so we've got some pretty vellum that kind of softens up the designs of the paper. She's got some fussy cut uh, flowers on top. She used the tasteful labels dies for um, her sentiment areas on her card. And then again, best year stamp set. I had a swap card that was gift, uh, gifted to me from Ashley Carlson on my team. I love this layout so much. I thought this would be a perfect layout to apply to this bundle. 
So here's a little swatch of the Paper Blooms paper, the Pierce dies in here, and the stamp set to complete this fun little card. So thank you, Ashley, for your inspiration. We had a sketch challenge that we did in, um, in our team for one of our team events, and it had a layer down here, like a strip, a layer going this way, and then three kind of circular areas here. And so I thought, you know what, that one paper that I just, I shoved at the bottom at the beginning of the video, it was perfect. I just punched them out. So this was punched with the two and a quarter inch punch. This is the two inch punch and this is the one and a half inch. Hang on. I think it's, yeah, one and a half inch circle punch. <laughs> and then here are some gold enamel, uh, uh, gold enamel dots, uh, gold glitter enamel dots, sorry. And each one of these, is embossed just to give it a little more um, pizzazz. So different folders, embossing folders on there. Fun, right? On the inside too of each card, I have like a circle that I cut into two parts. So that's another design you can do. And then here is that fun flat fold card that I demonstrated with the Hey Chick and Hey Birthday Chick bundles recently, but I did I applied it into the um, products here. So the Pierce Blooms dies. Um, this, uh, yeah, this comes from that stamp set. <laughs> yes, it does. Um, so I use that stamp set and then I use the paper to make this fun little fold. Isn't that neat? So yesterday's blog post at stampyourartout.com does have photos of a few. Um, You'll find the links to today's blog post for those samples and then the ones that I've already shared in the past. There are a few samples that I have not shared yet and those are the ones that are you know, using basically the stamp set and the dies. And I will get these photographed eventually and shared on my blog. Um, this one in particular, even though it's a case, I have to share you um, share with you the details of that. So these will be on future posts. Just can't do them all at once. And of course, today you will find the directions, measurements, supply list, photos for these cards. That's a lot of sharing today. <laughs> I hope that you had fun with that. Okay, so let's do prizes next. Um, we've got prizes for this week. These are rolls of kite twine, <laughs> Whisper White Solid Baker's Twine. This is a product that is no longer available, but just white, perfect, right? And these are um, self-adhesive sequins as well. They are called Gingham Gala. They are also retired product. But each winner, so the two that we draw today will win um, We'll win a set of these and then the one that we draw next week so the after live commenters can get in on that prize drawing for the last or the third set of that for the prize winners from last week again i'm going to share those names um soon if you didn't catch them at the beginning but i think it was who was it more uh, i better check here before i say it's um morgan and I eileen so morgan mcneil and eileen um, you have, you get to choose between these. So you'll want to reach out to me. These were the prizes from last week. You are probably just finding out today that you are winners. Um, we've got two approaching perfection stamp sets, which went, went with the projects I shared last week. I've got a corner bouquet stamp set. I've got darling donkeys, and then I've got three packs of the Oso oh ombre paper, which you'll want to grab because there's a card I'm sharing in just a few days that is gorgeous using that paper. Okay. My thing is telling me I have low battery. That was my technical difficulty, by the way. I have chargers that aren't working. So let's go to, let's go to the computer. And you can see the winner for last week was, um, for last week's thing was Kathy D. I don't have a last name. I know that you have a beautiful, I think there's yellow in there, like a flower for your um, YouTube. Um, thing, but you had mentioned love these ideas. Thank you, by the way. You are the winner for the third, um, you're the after live winner for the commenters on last week's video. So you also get to pick from one of those celebration items that I just had. And again, Morgan and Eileen, you'll want to reach out to me because you were drawn last week. We just couldn't see your names. All right, now 
we're gonna go to the computer so I well I'm gonna go to the computer so I can see if Trisha has chosen winners for this week's live that you're all on right now thank you for joining me by the way so I will peek and there I see it oh yay <laughs> it worked today Trisha <laughs> all right Sue and Carol so Sue Monroe and Carol Sklenar you are the winners for today's live and you will get um, the twine and the sequins mailed to you. you just have to reach out to me the email address is in Trisha's comment there um, you can also find it here if you are not catching her comment stamp your art out at comcast.net reach out to me let me know your contact information if you are outside the US by the way um, I can't send you product but I can send you other there's other options there's always other options um, in fact I think there was a winner one week um, who said something like I I I can't or I don't want to win the prize because I already have that stuff well she could have reached out to me I, I don't even know who it was now this was like months ago anyways um, could have reached out to me there's other options there's always other options so I don't want to give you something that you already have I hope that you had fun though um, I hope that you enjoyed this I know it was long again um, I invite you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already click like and then make sure your notifications are on so that when I am going live or going on, you know, have the announcement up that I'm going to go live soon that you'll get that notification. <sighs> oh my gosh, I just rambled today. Next week, next week um, is what day? Oh, 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 I'm going to peek here. It's one that I've been waiting to share with you. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, so a lot of you liked um, Elizabeth Hebert's um, Stamper Showcase projects that she shared. I am going to share you a version of one of her projects um, using the Hydrangea Hill suite of products. So you'll want to come back next week and check that out. It's also going to be our all-star blog hop day. So you'll be able to connect um, with my blog post that day to other projects using Hydrangea Hill. I hope that you stop back and visit me and that will be Wednesday, March 3rd at 11 a.m. Central Time. I think that's all. I think that's it. I just talked so fast today. There's just a few days left of celebration, so make sure that you get in on that. If you have not um, purchased any Stampin' Up! products in January, February, you're missing out. You just purchase, you know, $50 worth of product and you get to pick from freebies. Uh, it's a good time. Paper Blooms could be your designer paper pick of choice. There's stamp sets, there's all kinds of fun goodies. And then um, if, you, if your wish list is long, you can always get the starter kit because the starter kit includes those five packs of designer paper, $57.50 value in the US. Um, I'm not even including the shipping and tax that would be charged on those, but it's, um, it's paper that's coming to you earlier. It's paper that's gonna be in the next annual catalog in May, but anyone who signs up to get the starter kit gets it early and lots of colors, all the Stampin' Up! colors. Um, that you can imagine are in there. <laughs> it's a fun time. Discount shopper, might as well sign up, right? Okay, I'm gonna let you guys all go. You have a great week. Um, hopefully this eye will clear up by the time I see you next week, and then I can put on makeup on both eyes. Take care, everyone. Now I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out. Bye-bye. <laughs>